Thank you for choosing me. Um, meeting my girlfriend a few years ago, she introduced me to the law of attraction. <laughs> so I've been, you know, practicing it and working on it. And the past two years, I've pretty much been having everything go my way that I could ask for. It's the way more. it's supposed to be. It's the way it's supposed to be. Things are always working out for you. And when you know it and you start feeling good about that, then you let more of the things that are supposed to be working out for you work out for you. And the more that happens, the more you trust it, and the more you trust it, the more you do it, and the more you do it, the more you allow it, and the more you allow it, the more you trust it, and the more you trust it, the more you do it, and the more you do it, the more you allow it, the more you allow it, the more you trust it, the more this could take a while. And it works exactly like that. Yeah. But I always have a feeling that I'm missing something or is there something more I should be getting a source trying to give me something else but I haven't figured it out yet and am I in the right place for it for that to come well, to me? Well think about how that thought feels and therefore think about how contrary it is to what your inner being thinks in other words am I missing something am I doing something wrong your inner being is never thinking thoughts like that no I feels I'm doing everything right well, can I ask one question to that? I, sometimes I wonder that if everything is going so right and I'm still feeling like that, am I just being power hungry or is there really something out there reaching for me? Well, we wouldn't call you power hungry. We would call you eagerly anticipating your natural expansion. There's this sort of sweet spot that you can find. This is how it goes for so many of you. You focus upon what you want and the heavens open so to speak and avalanches of what you want flow into your experience and sometimes what you want comes faster than your ability to enjoy it or your ability to even deal with what you've attracted so then you feel overwhelmed well when you feel overwhelmed it slows everything down and then you get bored and then you focus again and so it's this balancing act where you're wanting to focus upon what you want and keep it coming but you're wanting to stay up to speed with what you're focusing upon so that you can enjoy it as it comes and that's why this alignment is not like a college degree where once you get it it's yours forevermore it is in the moment you're either in alignment or you are not so the way it works for most of you you get a little out of alignment that's kind of what step one is where you're sifting and sorting and that's not perfect alignment and then you launch these rockets of desires and then it takes a little while for you to line up with what you want that's the real deliberate part of this creative process where you deliberately think until you feel it sort of click into place and then you get into the sweet spot where you're feeling good and now the universe is yielding 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 to you but this is what happens to so many of you we're going to answer a question that's sort of been bothering you for a long time you're really going to enjoy this so the process is just having its way with you and you are coming into alignment with your own desires that have been carved out of your own life experience and then you hear our message or you just innately know that you want to feel good and so you do feel good more of the time and then things begin flowing and you really really like that and then the natural result of being in alignment and in harmony with your desires is that there will be a manifestation well what happens to you oh we like you so much humaners is that once it manifests then often you don't give as much focus as you were on tending to the energy now it's manifested you become an actionary person now you become a doer now you get involved with doing and it is in that phase that you run into more contrast which causes you to launch more rockets so there isn't anything wrong with it but here's an example so you have this dream we can feel so much coming from you we're going to give you a very complete answer here but this is a little precursor to that so this is an example you have this dream about an occupation or a business enterprise that will give you so many of the things that you've carved out of life that you want like a greater sense of freedom and doing more of the things that you really like to do and having greater control over the amount of money that flows and feeling the exhilaration of ideas coming to you and you getting to make the decision about them and act on them and 
gathering other cooperative components and having a really good relationship with a lot of really solid, stable, happy, productive, effective people. So you've been dreaming this and it's in your vortex and you've lined up with it and you weren't impatient about it. You knew because you understand the laws of the universe that it would come about and so you just held steady to the idea of it and you stayed optimistic about it even though you were working another job. So you allowed it to come and then it came. And now, oh, it felt good as it was coming. It felt good as it was evolving. It felt good as you were attracting the people. It felt good, it felt good, it felt good. But now you have a business. You have a business that you feel responsible to. And now you have employees that are not always tuned in, tapped in, turned on. Now you have payroll to meet and ideas that you want to flow. And there's a tendency to become the action-oriented person that you were before you were the energy-flowing person. Now you have a manifestation that seems to call your attention to it. You're following us? And that's usually when you, for the first time, begin introducing resistance into this dream. Now, what we want you to understand is that in the absence of a business, you could still dream about the essence of the business. And you could attract this wonderful business that you want. And all along, even after it's manifested, you could stay focused upon the new that you're reaching for. There could be a situation where employees are squabbling and you could put into your vortex that you want more compatibility among your employees. And you would receive inspiration. You would know exactly what to do to bring that about. You can be in the midst of the manifestation and still flow the energy appropriately. Now, we really want to say that loudly because you got to be able to do that. You got no other choice than to do that. You're already manifested. You're already in a body. You're already pretty experiencing all this action stuff. It's asking quite a lot. We are asking quite a lot of you to say, oh dear people, up to your eyeballs in life, in children and in relationships and in houses and in debts or bills, in action, for us to say, oh please, just set all of that life aside and let's talk about the vortex and let's talk about energy and let's talk about law of attraction and let's talk about stuff that isn't tangible, that doesn't seem important to your life experience. We ask a lot when we ask you to turn your attention from what is the real life, but we've got to get you to turn your attention away from what is the real life in order to clean up your vibration so that you can get more of the real life that you are wanting. You can't just keep observing what is and cause any change in your experience. Because when you observe what is, you offer a vibration what is, and so you just get more of what is. Different faces, different places, but it's essentially the same experience. So people just sort of stay in the same, these are your words, not ours, rut of life experience. Then along we come and we say, yes, you have this action-oriented world, but Come with us while we call your attention to your vibrational nature. Come to us while we demonstrate these rockets of desires that you're shooting off into this vortex of attraction which you can't see or hear or smell or taste or touch. And we know it's not easy for you to make that adjustment to begin thinking vibrationally and feeling vibrationally. But when you do, then that life experience that is manifested begins to morph into more of your chosen manifestations. We liked that conversation a lot, which brings us, because we've never offered a clearer explanation of how it works or how you fit into it than just now, which brings us to answering the specifics of what you are talking about. So here I am living pretty happily ever after, but sensing that there could be more. And I'm not really dissatisfied, but I'm sensing that there could be more. Well, what you're wanting it's not greed that's driving you. It's not power that's driving you. What you're wanting is to keep up with what you've already generated through life. We want to say to you that we've never met anyone who stayed moment by moment up to speed with everything that's in your vortex. Your vortex could keep you happily busy for 20 or 30 lifetimes. So what you are describing to us is that there's always this calling. You could call it the call of potential. We call it the call of your inner being who is already living what you've asked to live yourself. And your inner being is calling you to the fullness of it. Not because you need that manifestation to be happy, but because the journey along the path to that just feels so rich and delicious. Ask yourself, would I rather feel enthusiastic about something or bored? Now, you could take it another way. Would I rather feel overwhelmed or peaceful? 
Well, of course you'd rather feel peaceful than overwhelmed. But let's take it further. Would you rather feel energetic and adventurous and excited about something or bored? And we know the answers to those questions, whether you are knowing them or not. The answer is you must move toward what you've become or you become complacent and dissatisfied, which brings us to really what you're asking about. To take action from a place of split energy is always unpleasant. So to try to focus, let's say you're focused upon something not working, to dig in and try to offer effort and to try to think harder about how you're going to get that done just causes you to pile more engines on in opposition. So the rule of thumb that we would apply if we were standing in your physical shoes would be we would follow the good feeling thoughts. So if, for example, you feel a little enthusiasm about something, then that's when you really want to start thinking about it. Because if there's even a little bit of enthusiasm and you begin thinking about it, then that's the momentum that you're increasing. On the other hand, if you're worried about something and you think harder about it, then that's the energy that you're increasing. So we want you to take away from this day's conversation, what's this thought that I'm doing? Which end of my train am I applying a new engine to? When you say, well, I feel a little bored and I realize that I have more potential. Maybe I should apply myself a little better. Maybe I should study a little harder and maybe I should get a little more involved in what I want. That's piling engines on the wrong end of the train. And you can tell by the way you feel as you do it. But if you're saying something like, well, I like momentum and I like to feel good and I like when ideas flow and I'm looking forward to new ideas flowing and I really like getting hold of a new idea. I love a new idea taking me with it and I love the feeling that law of attraction brings me as more cooperative components are gathered and when I think about it I'd rather feel adventurous than afraid and yet when you think about it think about those two emotions don't they kind of go together for a lot of people you're gonna get into Esther's Audi R8 with Esther and she's gonna show you how fast it can go in four seconds you might feel adventure and you might feel dread and fear <laughs> And we're just asking you which feels better. We're just asking you which feels better. Because the situation isn't what's causing it. What's causing it is the momentum you've already got going on. And so from what we can feel from you, we would make more lists of the things that we're enjoying about our life. Because we don't feel resistance in you. We don't feel that you've got resistance that's holding you back. And under those conditions, attention to subjects that please you can cause the momentum to go faster. This is always true. In the absence of resistance, the faster you go, the better you like it. This is always true. In the absence of resistance, the faster you go, the better you like it. This is always true. In the presence of a lot of resistance, the faster you go, the more it beats up on you. And so humans are just thinking they should just go fast all the time. Mm. Only go fast in the absence of resistance. How about this? If you're going 100 miles an hour and you hit a tree, isn't it a bigger problem than if you're going five miles an hour and you hit a tree? So the tree represents the resistance. So if you feel like you've got resistance, the answer isn't dig in and try harder, although that's what everybody around you wants you to do. The answer is to chill out. The answer is to relieve the stress. The answer is to let go of it. The answer is to give in. And what are you giving into? You're not giving up on your dreams. Your dreams are alive and well in your vortex. You're giving up on the resistance that is depriving you of the inspiration to have that delicious, sweet spot, glorious path on your way to the unfolding and fulfillment and fuller manifestation of the things that you want. Can you hear this?